Hey, hi, and hello, it's me, Nikki. Welcome back to day two of our daily devotional. We did skip yesterday. Um, I don't even have a reason, <laughs> except that I forgot. Um, I usually work by my planner and I did not even look at my planner yesterday. So please forgive me. It was a holiday though, okay? Okay, so we're coming from the indwelling life of Christ, all of him and all of me. We are on um, devotion no number two and the title is are you normal are you normal you would probably answer yes to that question but do you really know what normality is for human beings after all a knowledge of normality is the only basis upon which we can diagnose accurately that is why we have to understand very clearly how God created us. Only then can we have an intelligent understanding of what God of what has gone wrong and its consequences and what God has done to put things right. That's a little better. <laughs> In Psalm 8, David asks God, "What is man that you are mindful of him?" Then David acknowledges you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. That's found in Psalm 8, 4 through 6. This was man in his innocence, man in normality, man as God created him in Adam, crowned with glory. That's good. <laughs> That's what's normal. What was the glory in which God crowned man? God had said, let us make man in our own, in our image, according to our likeness. That's found in Genesis 1 and 26. Man in the image of God was to be equipped by his divine indwelling, the Holy Spirit occupying the human spirit so that man would manifest the very glory of God. <laughs> That's good, y'all. That's real good. Man in the image of God was to be equipped by his divine indwelling, the Holy Spirit occupying the human spirit so that man would manifest the very glory of God. It was a derived glory, exclusively dependent upon the presence of the creator within the creature. Likewise, the authority man was to exercise over the earth was the authority that derived exclusively from his submission to God's authority. We got a lot of work to do. The Bible makes it abundantly clear that God, I should say I got a lot of work to do. The Bible makes it abundantly clear that God himself, the creator within the creature, must be the origin of his own image. After God completed his work of creation by creating man, God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. That's found in Genesis 1 and 31. What did he see in that moment when he looked at man whom he created in his perfect image? He saw himself, y'all. For God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Genesis 1 and 27. I like that. God himself as our creator always intended that he should indwell us. Always intended. His cherished ambition was to be seen and heard in those he created. This is good, y'all. This is really good. His, his, his cherished ambition was to be seen and heard in those he created. You and me. That is normality for a human being when God himself is behaving in and through a man or woman. That is normality for a human being. This is the purpose for which he created us, that we might be physical, visible, ex that we might be a physical, visible expression on this earth of the God who is otherwise invisible. As John tells us, no one has seen God at any time. So y'all stop saying y'all seen him. Because you haven't. John 
John 1 and 18 say that. <laughs> God created each human being with a physical, visible, and audible body to be inhabited by an invisible God. To make himself visible through what that person does and says and is. God himself must be the origin of this activity within us, which is called righteousness. The activity that God displays through us is called righteousness. So anytime you ain't doing righteous stuff, anytime we're not doing righteous stuff, guess who's not being displayed? Him. God is the author of all righteousness. And for you and me to produce it, he must be within us the he must be within us the origin of his own image, the source of his own activity, the dynamic of his own demands and the cause of his own effect. This man be right in Major W E and Thomas. Come on. Therefore, if any human being is truly normal in his or her behavior, there's only one person to be congratulated. It's not you, it's not me. And that is God himself. <laughs> Come on, let's wrap it up. Give him one hand clap. <laughs> yes. Normality for a human being is when God can be seen by anything and everything which that person does and says and is. Our natural man or who we are in our flesh is void of righteousness and also of any true spirituality. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You don't just get to see this with the naked eye, y'all. 1 Corinthians 2 and 14 says that. The natural man cannot know the things of the Spirit of God because he is morally and intellectually incapacitated. Okay? Since I got a little battery. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. I got a I got I got a little battery, but I got a, a thing too. Hold on. Let's see if I can catch it before it go off. Let you nobody else's YouTube is doing this, huh? Oh well. Ah. Oh. Hold on, y'all. I'm coming. I'm coming. Do not, whatever you do, do not stop. I'm put y'all closer. So hold on. Somebody will say, you gonna still post this? I am. This is my second time reading this now. I'm not doing it again. We made it. Oh, now this thing want to act funny. Come on now. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right. We're going to finish it up. Um, in his fallen condition, he is destitute. The, let's go back. The natural man cannot know the things of the Spirit of God because he is morally and intellectually incapacitated. The natural man is not normal. The natural man is not normal. He is not what God created and intended man to be. In his fallen condition, he is destitute, empty, and alienated from the person of his creator. Listen, this is why I'm always against when people say, be your authentic self. No, you don't want authentic Nikki because authentic Nikki is void of God working through her because Nikki becomes boastful. Nikki becomes the front and center. Now, I'm not saying that I don't walk in authenticity a lot of times, most days, 
but I'm also not saying that that's correct. The more authentic I am, the less God gets to uh, um, operate through me. It's just the truth. Uh, the moment you come to realize that only God can make a person righteous uh, and godly, you are left with no option but to find God and to know him and to let God be God in and through you, whatever that will mean. This will leave you with no margin for picking and choosing for there is only one God and he is absolute and he made you expressly for himself. I know you think he made you for you, but he made you for him. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Ephesians 4, 23 and 24 is where that's found. Here are two questions. How normal are you? And what is true normal normality for a human being? Do you agree with this? Do you agree with what he says? Or do you still find yourself saying, but I want to breathe. I want to live. I want, I want, I want my good person to be. I want to, I want to show who I am. If you don't have the express notion and desire to let God be God in and through you, then that, that talks about the immaturity that we have in Christ. Understand that I'm not saying that you've arrived, that you should only, that this is what I'm doing or this is what you have to do. What I'm saying is, if that's not your goal, if that's not your desire, then it really is required that you draw nearer to God. It really is required that we draw nearer to God. Every time we want to let our authentic self shine through, what we are saying is, I want my flesh to breathe. I want my flesh to live. And God is saying, in my kingdom, that ain't normal. You have been made and created for me. And I desire to shine through you where they can't see you and they can only see me. That's what he's saying. That's what Ian's trying to say. No, that's what Ian said. And then the final question is, what does it mean to let God be God in and through you? It really means to empty yourself. It really means to avail your entire being to God. And I ain't saying that's easy. Because, baby, the flesh been living so long. The flesh so strong. What does it say? Um, um, the spirit is willing, but the, the but but my flesh, my, but but it's weak. That ain't what it say. What does it say? I'm going to find out real quick. Hold on, y'all. The spirit is willing. Yeah, I said it right. Come on, I know the Bible. I know my Bible. I know two, three things from it. Matthew um, 26, 40 through 43 says, um, then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watching with me for one hour? He asked Peter, <clears throat> watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh weak. You know why the, you know why the uh, flesh is weak? And really, the flesh is weak, meaning it's, it's stronger then the because we fed it so much we 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 let this flesh hang all out we let this flesh do what it want to do sometimes we like to curtail it and pull it back get that get that together you just said too much you didn't did too much we don't do that anymore you don't do that anymore but you do this and so this blocks god shining through so anyway i'm not going to get on a soapbox there i'm just knowing that I want to walk in more normality according to the word of God. And just to just to um just to sum it up to to reiterate, he says, you have made him, yet who are you? Uh, what is man that you are mindful of him? And then David acknowledges. You have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. This was in this was man in his innocence, man in normality. How do we get to that, Lord? 
how do we get to that normalcy in you? It is simply to deny our flesh. And that is, that is a simple sentence, but it is a hard task. Down flesh down, become subject to the word of God now in Jesus' name.